Do you want to know how to build a full stack web application in ASP.NET Core MVC but just can't figure out how to put all the pieces together? Maybe you've dabbled with some projects but you never seem to finish because you don't know how to connect it all. Well in this video I'm going to break it all down in a beginner friendly way and show you just how easily you can create a functional and simple full stack project. We'll build a blog web application but the principles we'll cover can be applied to any project you have in mind. We'll also use AI to handle the front end, taking care of much of the heavy lifting for us. Especially if you're like me, which I wouldn't necessarily recommend and don't enjoy the front end part that much. After watching this video, the next time you sit down to code, you'll feel confident that you can build a full stack app on your own. Well, let's dive in. Let's just open up Visual Studio and create an empty MVC project and we'll go from there. Super simple, just go to create a new project here, search for an MVC template here on top, and we'll select the first option that should appear, which has C sharp as its language, not F sharp. Click on it, click on next. Let's just name this like uh, blog app, whatever you want. I'll leave the location of the project as it is. Click on next, I leave the framework here to .NET 8, this is the latest version I have installed. Click on create and wait for Visual Studio to generate our project. Okay, now that we have our project, the first step is going to be to create our model class. This is the base of any project you make. No matter how big your full stack application is going to be, you usually start here. So just click on the models folder, click on add, and we are going to create a model class for our blog posts. So let's name this like post.cs. Click on add and just for simplicity, I have already created this class. I have stored it here before with just a few properties for the ID, the title, the content of the post and for the date when it was created. Let me just copy this, paste it right here, save it. And now the next step, I'm going to use this scaffolding option to create my controller with all of the CRUD action methods. If you haven't done this before, if you haven't created a full stack project before, I would highly recommend to watch my video when I go in depth and create each method myself. The link is on the card on the screen or below, but if you have already coded like a project similar to this, you can also as well just go here to the controllers, click on add controller. And instead of creating an empty controller, you can we can use this scaffolder that Visual Studio has so that our, all of the methods are generated for us. Just click on add and wait for Visual Studio to create our controller, but we have to select a few options here. So the first thing is going to be the model class, which is our post model class and the DB context class. We can either create it ourselves, but I'm also gonna let this scaffolder generated for us. Let's leave the name as it is. So the context basically connects our model to the database. And this is part of entity framework core. Here below, I'll just leave the name of the controller as it is. Click on add and just wait a bit for Visual Studio just a moment. Now, I don't know if this is smart or lazy. I think it's both, but you judge it yourself. Here we have our controller with all of our action methods for our crowd operations. We have a views folder created as well. Here in the posts folder, we have all of our crowd view pages. Now the next step is going to be, we have the, in the data folder created with our context class here with a DB set instance for the post model that we created. So just to set up the project right now, we are going to need to create a database instance. So how we can do that? Just go to the view menu here, click on server explorer and just above click with the right of the mouse, create new SQL server database. Let me just open SQL server management studio here to get the server name so that we connect it with visual studio. So this is, my server name, I'll copy this connect here and just go back to the project. 
put the server name here. I'll set the encryption to false here and trust server certificate basically. This means we do not have to like put a password to connect our project to the database. That's the short explanation. And let's give a name to our database here. Like the name of the project was simple blog underline data or something like that. Click on OK. And here in the properties window here, we should have the details of our database that we just created. I'm going to get the connection string, which just tells us the physical location of our database. And we store this in the app settings.json file. There should be already like a default connection string. I'm just going to remove this if I can just input the correct connection string here. Okay, our project just at this point is all set up. What we're going to need to do is just add these migrations to our database. So we created the model, everything, the DB context with the DB set instance. We have the address of our database and the SCAF folder actually as well. Just added the service here for the context in the program.cs class. So everything is set up. Just go to Go to tools to NuGet package manager, package manager console, and we're going to add these changes, the migrations to the database. So just click on add dash migration. And let's write here what we did in this migration, like post model added. We could also just write their initial migration anyways. Hit on enter and wait for the migration to be added. So the migration is just like this database schema that represents how our database will look like. So a table is being created with these properties in our database for our post model. Now let's just update these changes to the database with this update da dash database command, hit on enter and everything should be set up for us. I want to share a free resource that I know will help you as a .NET and C Sharp developer. It's my free roadmap to learning .NET and C Sharp development. This roadmap breaks down all the essential technologies and topics you need to focus on so you can avoid wasting time on things that don't matter. Whether you're an absolute beginner or already coding but unsure what to learn next, this guide gives you clear and actionable steps to follow. I created this guide because I often get asked how to start or what to learn next. Instead of repeating the advice, I turned it into a resource you can access anytime. Again, it's completely free. Take a second, click the link in the description and grab your copy. Everything's done. Let's run the project. Okay, let's just go to the, let me open Visual Studio again, go to the posts folder and to the index view page, just click with the right of the mouse and click on view in browser. Or you could just go to that specific URL here to go to the index view page. Everything is empty. Let's check if the CRUD operations are working as they should. Click on create new. Actually, we're going to need to remove this part here so that we do not need to select the date ourselves because each model, each post when it is created will get the current time. So just go to the create view page here and just remove this form group for the date. Just remove this here, run the project one more time. Go to the, this exact page. Okay, so let's just select like a title for the blog. Let's just write this lorem ipsum, this generic thing. Let's write a text in it. like. I'm just searching for some boilerplate text. Okay, just something small. Amazing. Okay. 
no points for creativity here but anyways just click on create and the blog post should be created and it's inputted here in a table this looks horrible but we have the title the content the created date the date the time when it, the blog post was created all of these other options should be working correctly the edit crowd operation the delete one so now is the fun part at this point our application is working the crowd operations are working and just by using ai in this case to just change the visual appearance of our index page and of our create page this would actually look like a blog website at least more than it does now so let's just let me just go to ChatGPT here. The more accurate that our input to ChatGPT is, the better the response is also going to be. So I'm just going to focus on giving a model class, which is the base of our project, and we'll ask it to give us like a better way to present it in the index and in the create page. But also I will just prompt it to use only bootstrap classes so that we do not need to handle the CSS classes, JavaScript classes. It could give us all kinds of things. Maybe it gives us Blazor or who knows, but this is how I'm going to ask it to give the simplest design that I believe actually it would we could get in this case. So I have just explained the kind of project that I have created and given it the post model class and just ask ChatGPT to give me the index and details view page actually so that the first page will have just the blogs a bit about them and then when we click like add more we should be redirected to like another page that tells us gives us the blog details that's how blogs work and also just specified here that we want to use only bootstrap classes make it that it looks like a blog so just hit on enter, let's see what it gives us. Okay, we have the index view page, let's try this. At first, I'm just gonna copy from this line here since this doesn't like specify the correct address name of our project that is here above. So I'm just gonna copy this part here, paste it and see how it looks like. run our project without debugging this is refreshing okay so this is our blog post we see the title here we see a bit about what the blog has and these three dots here the date when it was posted and the option to read more then just go and take the code for our details view page let me just copy this part and paste it in our details view page. Run the project again without debugging. Okay, let me just make a last refresh, click on read more. Okay, there is obviously a pro problem here. And the actual mistake is just right here. The second parameter here should write the name of our controller, which is posts in plural, not in singular and yeah ai is not perfect if you don't know what you are doing this would like this would be more confusing actually but let me try so that i'm not talking nonsense let me write the program one more time let me just refresh the page here okay our only blog post if you, we click on read more okay we are redirected in another page just the name of the blog the date when it was posted and the actually content of the blog and we have the option here to go back we could have multiple blog posts i guess the url is that takes us back is also done falsely if we go here to the details page is like yeah we can go back this second parameter should have the name of our controller i don't know why ai did that wrong but yeah it's not perfect you can go again to the posts index route here click on read more our blog post go back here to the main page where should be listed all of our blog posts 
As you can see, creating the initial structure or a simple version of whatever project you have in mind can be done in this much time. My recommendation is to pick a project you're passionate about, just start and see how far you can take it. By the way, I have a course that shows you how to build a web application that solves an actual real problem. From ideation to publishing, so you'll have a guide to support you as you build the project yourself. You don't have to buy it, the important thing is to start building something on your own. That's what will truly transform you as a developer. The link to the ASP.NET Core MVC Blueprint course is in the description if you're interested. Otherwise, I'd recommend checking out the video on the screen to watch my MVC course. It will help you build on what you've learned today and clarify anything that might still be unclear. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.